our privilege to worship you on this holy Sabbath day. Thank you for all your many blessings upon us. And Father, thank you for the snow. Thank you that it reminds us that we need to be purer than, than snow and that you are able to do that. Father, we just want to open our hearts. Please speak to us through this worship service. Be with you people around the globe and uh, help us to exalt Jesus, our mighty Savior. Just fill us with your Holy Spirit. And thank you for your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please stand as we're going to sing. Uh, give me the Bible, number uh, 272. The Bible is a very precious thing that God has preserved for us. And so sing it from your heart, 272. <coughs> give me the Bible. So those who are partakers of the grace of Christ will be ready to make a sacrifice that others for whom he died may share the heavenly gift. They will do all they can to make the world better for their stay in it. This spirit is a sure outgrowth of a soul truly converted. No sooner does one come to Christ than there is born in his heart a desire to make known to others what a precious friend he has found in Jesus. The saving and sanctifying truth cannot be shut up in his heart. If we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ and are filled with the joy of his indwelling spirit, we should not be able to hold our peace. If we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, we should have something to tell. Like Philip, when he found the Savior, we shall invite others into his presence. We shall seek to present to them the attractions of Christ and the unseen realities of the world to come. There will be an intensity of desire to follow in the path 
that Jesus trod, steps of Christ. Your giving today will help our church family remain a godly presence to those in our community. Amen. Amen. I hope the deacons would come forward. Dear Lord, we're thankful for this church that we can be in this Masaki County and Lake City, that we can reach out to those around us, Lord, that we can be a light in this community, that others will see Jesus in us, that we can lead others to you, Lord. We know that we're on this earth for a purpose, and it's to save as many people as we can by our actions and our words, that people will be drawn to the truth of your Bible. Help us to be known as Bible-believing Christians that truly love our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath morning that we can come to church to worship you, that we can be together and we can spend time together in your word, Lord. And we pray that you be with Baal as he speaks today, Lord, and help his words touch our hearts, Lord. Send the Holy Spirit into this place that we can all be blessed by this message, that we can all be blessed by the words out of this holy book. Amen. Lord, we thank you for giving us the Bible that Amen. we have a guide in our lives that will bring us closer and closer to you. Lord, help us to be people of the book, to read your word, to study your word, and to live by your word. Amen. Lord, we pray for our school. We pray for our parents of homeschoolers, and we just pray for everyone that's involved with raising our youth up to love and follow you and serve you. Lord, help us to be good examples. Help us to show them that we love each other and that we love this community, and that we can be used by you. Lord, be with our church family and help us to draw closer and closer to you every day, that we can be committed, that our lives will be committed to you, Lord, that we don't, the fire doesn't go out after all these meetings, Lord, Amen. that we stay on fire for you, Amen. that we still invite people to church, and we are searching for souls Amen. that haven't found you yet, Lord. Help us to be that light in this community. Lord, we pray for our radio station, our TV station. Amen. We pray for our Facebook, that um, people are watching and learning the truth. And Lord, we just pray for however we can reach people, that we're willing to do what we can to show others that we love you and that you love us. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for the gift of your son that we don't deserve. 
that um, it proves how much you love us. Help us to get a blessing out of the service today and help us to all have a closer walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 of reading as we go to 753 in the back of our Psalter and Keith will lead us in that. How can a youth remain pure by behaving as your word prescribes? I have treasured your promises in my heart since I have no wish to sin against you. With my lips I have repeated them, all these rulings from your own mouth. I mean to meditate on your precepts and to concentrate on your paths. Open my eyes, I shall concentrate on the marvels of your law. As your word unfolds, it gives light, and the simple understand. Universal peace for those who love your law, no stumbling blocks for them. Amen. And today we're going to be blessed by special music by Abby Fenner.
Praise God. Thank you, Abby and Hudson and Devin for helping. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for raising up these children in the, in the fear of the Lord. What a blessing. Um, you know, just as children need to share their toys, the adults need to share the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Yes, we do. Well, I'm very happy to be with you here. This is our final presentation. There's a lot more could be shared, but um, we're going to conclude with this today, Revelation 11. If you want to follow with me, there we will cover 14 verses. And um, so um, it's a very important topic, war against the Bible. You know, there was war all through history against the Bible, starting with uh, Cain and even with Eve, you know. But um, this one is especially here, we will see a couple of incidents where it was brought out in the scripture that we need to pay attention to. And so, but before we get into the scripture, I would like to have a word of prayer with you. It's a very sound topic. I need your prayers. And um, let us kneel as far as possible and come before our Almighty God. Heavenly Father, Creator, Mighty King of the universe, thank you for sending Jesus, our mighty Savior, our Prince. Father, thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. And thank you for preserving the Word of God through all these 6,000 years. Amen. Father, that we can have it in our hands today. Oh, how great thou art, and how greatly to be praised. Only you know how much you have to do to preserve it for us. Help us to cherish it. Help us to learn from it. Help us to understand our duty from it for today. Now I pray that your Holy Spirit will work, work mightily. You have showered us through this series, and, and I know you can do it one more time. And so please just uh, open our hearts and let your holy angels help us just like they helped Daniel. Help us to understand your truth for this time. Thank you for hearing us and being with us. For Jesus' sake, amen. amen. So, war against the Bible. And uh, we'll start here. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. If it disagrees with the Bible, it's not for me. Amen? The Bible is an absolute authority of truth. Amen. We need to understand it, you know, because a lot of people think, well, part of it is true and part of it is not. There are many people like uh, evolutionists, you know, they take part of the Bible, but not all of the Bible. And those are highly educated people. Mm. And, uh, you know, we cannot go with you. You need to take it from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. And uh, God will bless your learning and your understanding for sure. And so, in Revelation chapter 11, verse, uh, verse 1, I would like to share with you today really four things. One is there is a judgment. Secondly, we will see the 1260 years of sackcloth uh, dark ages period. And then after that, we will see this this uh, satanic uh, power coming up uh, and we will see that who is that satanic power coming up and killing the Bible. You know, how can you kill the Bible? Well, we'll see that. And, uh, and then, uh, of course, just for a period of time. And then finally, we will see that the, that the gospel is going, that people are glorifying God and printing the pages by the billions and the Bibles. So um, here in Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, it says, And there was given me what? A reed. A, reed, a measuring uh, rod, a reed like unto a rod, 
and uh, the angels and the angels stood saying, "Rise, rise! Measure what? The temple. There are three things to measure: measure the temple of God, and the altar, altar and uh, them the them that worship therein. Why the temple? Is the temple important? Yeah. Well, we don't want just some kind of occultish." Uh, a gathering place. We want a place that honor God. We want a place that exalt Christ in every way. And I'm grateful that we have a nice uh, church here where we can worship the Creator God. Secondly, the altar. Why the altar? The altar is crucial. Without the altar, you have no forgiveness of sin. You have no future. And so the altar is very important that the altar needs to be based on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Muslims don't have an, an altar that is acceptable in, in the Creator God's eyes, nor the Hindus and nor any other, really. Only the Christians, only the Jews had the altar, really, that was acceptable. And then uh, them that worship therein. What about that? Well, you know, we need to develop a character that can fit for heaven. And uh, the altar gives us the ticket, but, but uh, uh, we are being shaped and molded for heaven that will give us the fitness, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, robes that are washed in the shedded blood of Jesus Christ. Well, in uh, 1 Peter 4, uh, 17, it says, Judgment must begin at the uh, where? at the house of God, and if first began with us, what shall, what shall the end be of them that do what? Obey God. That obey the gospel of God. God gave us the good news. We need to embrace this good news and run with it. And run with it. Um, in Revelation 21 verse 15, it says, um, and he that talked with me uh, had a golden reed, there again, uh, judgment to measure the, the city with the reed and the gates thereof and the walls thereof, Revelation 21, 15. And so, you know, Jerusalem there in Israel today, it's, it's ruined. It's, it, there's, there's nothing really of the temple, hardly just a little uh, resemblance and the praying wall. But uh, we are looking for the Jerusalem, which is, which is where? Above. Which is above. We need to focus on Jerusalem, which is above what happening there, what takes place. And this is the mother of us all, according to Galatians uh, 4, verse 26. Revelation 21, verse 17, it says, And he measured the wall thereof and hundred and fourteen four cubits. And uh, Ephesians 4, 1, it says, unto the measure of the fullness of Christ. Christ. That's our aim. We need to become like Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you know, many of us can say I'm not there yet. That's true. But I'm on my way. Amen? Yes, we ought to be on our way. We may not be there yet, but we ought to be. Christ is our example. And look at this one. In First uh, Peter chapter two verse uh, five, it says, "Ye also as what kind of stones? Lively. lively stones. We need to be lively stones and built up in, in a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer what spiritual sacrifices. spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ." Then Ephesians chapter uh, two verse eighteen, it says, "For." Through who? For through him, Jesus Christ, we both, the Jews and the Gentiles, um, have access, how? By one, By one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, unto the Father, the Heavenly Father. So here you can see uh, the Godhead verse that we have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Holy Spirit there. And the Gentiles meaning, you know, all, the, all those who are non-Jews, all other nations of the world. And so, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there any other, for there is what? None. There is none. 
There is none other name under heaven, under the whole heaven, given among men whereby we must, must be saved. In other words, Jesus Christ is the only Savior for the whole universe. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Jesus is needed for the Hindu. Jesus for, is needed for the Muslim. Jesus is needed for the Buddhist. Jesus is needed for everyone. I remember, you know, uh, one night staying up with this uh, Muslim young man. And, uh, you know, he fell in some sin and, and he was terribly guilt stricken. And so uh, we stayed up with him uh, almost all night. Uh, he was just having big burden. And so we shared the gospel with him. Amen. You know, that, that the Muslims don't have this. Yeah. The Muslims don't have the altar, but, but we do have the altar. And the altar is Jesus Christ. Through him, we can bring our sins and just lay it on his shoulder. Amen. And he forgives us freely. And he lets us, cleans us, and lets us go. And he helps us to say no to that sin in the future. Yeah. He's empowering us. You know, it's, it's amazing. So everyone, in the, in, when I was in India, you know, people were coming, grabbing the Bible for the first time in their life, their first literature, you know, after their baptism. We, we gave them, every one of them, um, 5,000 were baptized each time. So, gave them 10,000 Bibles. Amen. And so they were able to appreciate and uh, learn what a blessing for have the Bible for your first literature. Um, yes, it's crucial. This is very important for us to understand that, yes, Jesus Christ is the one. Look at Ephesians uh, 3, 20 and 29. It says, uh, therefore ye are fellow citizens with the saints, and of the who? Household. household of God and are built upon what? The There's a foundation. There's a foundation of the apostles and of the prophets. So we have the apostles and the prophets. In other words, built on the Bible. The apostles are the New Testament and the prophets are the Old Testament. Jesus Christ himself being what? The chief. He is the chief cornerstone. What does yeah. that mean? Yeah. That every measurement, you know, the uh, builders pull a line and every measurement is taken from the cornerstone. Yeah. Whether it be horizontally or vertically, every measurement is taken from the cornerstone. That's how crucial the cornerstone is. Yeah. Amen, does that make sense? Yeah. So in Ephesians 2, 21 and 22, it says, In whom all the building are how? Fitly. Fitly framed together um, unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I want to use us as a vessel for him and at the same time as we are gathering together you know there ought to be unity there ought to be uh, and sometimes you know there is some uh, rubbing uh, before we can uh, really fit uh, but God is working and we need to just Lord let your way with me amen, amen. yeah in Zechariah chapter 9 verse uh, 16 it says the Lord their God shall do what? Save. He will save them in that day. You and I will be saved as long as we cling to Jesus Christ. For they shall be as what? Stones. They shall be as stones, but precious stones. You know, just like this crown. Um, uh, stones of a crown lifted uh, up as an uh, ensign upon his land. And so... May God help us to be those stones. Look at what Ezekiel did in Ezekiel 40, verse 47 and 41, 22. It says, so he measured. Here is again a judgment. He measured what? The altar. He measured the altar. The altar was important. And the altar is important today. That was before the house, uh, the altar of wood. wood. Did he know that 600 years before that? That it will be on the wood? Holy Spirit. 
you know, because normally the altars are not on wood. You know, normally they put stones together. But here, uh, he foresaw what is coming. So thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And thank you for empowering me to live a holy life and giving me future, eternal future. Marvelous. Marvelous. Well, uh, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 2, going on further, it says, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. not. You don't have to measure that. Why? For it is given unto who? The Gentiles, the, Gentiles, the other nations, the ungodly, those who, who really don't have the word of God, those who really are not following the narrow path, those who are brutal and murderers and so on. It's given to the Gentiles and the holy city shall they do what? Tread underfoot. Tread underfoot. Did they do that? Yes. Yeah, they did that. How long? Forty and two months. So we will deal with this 1260 years because God wants us to understand this. God put it into seven times into the Bible. So we need to uh, understand it thoroughly. And then the next verse, uh, verse 3 in uh, Revelation 11, it says, And I will give power unto my, my what? My two, my two witnesses. My two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score uh, days, again, the same period of time, clothed in sackcloth. These uh, 1260 years are mentioned two times in just this uh, Revelation 11. So, you know, sackcloth, um, they used sackcloth when they were fasting and praying. You know, sackcloth meant that you don't have your full potential, you know, that you are brought low. Um, and uh, so uh, for 1260 years, we will have this sackcloth for the two witnesses. Well, we'll uh, see who are these two witnesses in the minute. And uh, Matthew 24, verse 15, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he says, when ye therefore shall see. In other words, you will be able to see. It's seeable. You will be able to see the abomination of desolation. There will be an abomination and desolation spoken of by who? Daniel the prophet. Daniel the prophet. In other words, the book of Daniel is important. You need to understand it. You need to study it. You need to uh, uh, comprehend it. Then shall be... Great. Great Tribulation, again, 1260 uh, papal, uh, papal reign, uh, 1260 years of papal reign, uh, Jesus is uh, predicting there. And um, in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, it says, For the, the uh, secret power of lawlessness, did you catch that? Yeah. Lawlessness, in other words, turning away from the wisdom of God. And so lawlessness is already at work, but uh, the one who is, the one who now holds it back will continually to do so till he is taken out of the way. So uh, time will come, change will come. That's why a lot of Christians, they were praying for the peace of Rome, uh, papal Rome, I mean pagan Rome, pagan Rome. Why? Because they knew that the worst is coming. The papacy rises after pagan Rome uh, divided. Well, how did that took place? Um, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, uh, from the time that the daily shall be taken away. You know what was the daily? Um, a daily was a reminder of Jesus Christ that you need forgiveness. You need constant dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so daily shall be taken away and the abomination that make desolate set up. set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Twelve hundred and uh, uh, Daniel uh, 12 verse 11. Well, how did that happen? Here we're talking about uh, 1290, not 1260. Well, it took 30 years to pluck up three horns for them, to destroy three nations. And then, the plus 1260 papal reign, uh, that adds up to 1290 years set up 
and reign. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Rome divided. Papacy set up by France. by who? France. You know, that's very important for us to know. You know, the papacy operates, but he always has an army. That's right. Uh, can we turn the heat down just two degrees? Uh, I forgot to do that. Um, it says um, 476, pagan Rome divided into 10 kingdoms. That's the pagan Rome. Then 496, French King Clovis became Catholic and the first son of who? The church. First son of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, the first horn as well. The first and then uh, from five, uh, 508 to 538, to set up the papacy in 30 years. They set it up, uh, and that was France. Um, as terminated uh, the three horns, or three kings, uh, uh, three kingdoms. What are these? Vandals, Heroli, and Ostrogoths. And so from 538 to 1798, papacy reigns as the abomination of desolation. That's why John Paul II was, was uh, um, praying, uh, asking people to, you know, forgive, forgive for them for the atrocities that they have done during the abomination of desolation. They know, they know that they murdered uh, precious, precious faithful Christians by the millions uh, during these years. Here Jesus speaking again in Luke uh, 21 uh, verse um, 24 and he says, and they shall fall by the what? The edge of the sword. They were falling by the edge of the sword and shall be led astray captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. That was the time of the Gentiles, 1260 years. Um, here in Daniel 7.25, Daniel tells us, and he shall speak great words, not for, but against blasphemies, against the Most High. Why? Because he wants to exalt himself, not the Lord Jesus Christ, and shall wear out the saints. In other words, war with the saints of the Most High, and they shall be given into his very hands into his very hands until the times and times and dividing of time or 1260 years. Uh, yes, they did that. Daniel 8, uh, 10 and uh, 12, it says, and it will what? Wax it will wax great, even to the most, even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host to the ground and stamp upon them that's very brutal, you know, that uh, that would happen to Christians. And it cast down what? The truth. Cast down the truth. What is the truth? Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the truth. The Holy Spirit is the truth. God the Father is the truth. Um, the, the Ten Commandment is the truth. But also the Word of God is the truth. And so they are throwing down the Word of God during this time to the ground and they are practicing and they are prospering. God allows them to show their color. Right. Does that make sense? Right. You know, every character will be revealed. That's why, that's why this message is so crucial for us because we need to understand that, you know, just, just claiming the name of Jesus will not take you to heaven. Unless we will have the character of Jesus, unless we will be filled with the spirit of Jesus and not acting with the Antichrist spirit, we will not go to heaven, you know. And it would be sad to be spending uh, years in, uh, in the right church, in the remnant church, and not making it to heaven. You know, we need to make it to heaven. Amen? Amen. Yes, may God help us. Daniel 11, verse 28 and 29, it says, His heart shall be against what? against the Holy Covenant. You know, the Ten Commandment is the Covenant. It's in the Ark of the Covenant. He's against that. He don't like that. And uh, he shall have indignation against the Holy Covenant time and time again. He shall even have, what? Intelligence, intelligence with them that forsake, that forsake the Holy Covenant. Oh, God help us. 
Yeah, it's everything against the Holy Covenant. And um, arms or military power shall stand on his part. Yeah, he was able to move France. He was able to move other armies. And as we read Revelation 13, he will be able to move this very nation. This very nation who was against it before. And so, yes, he will move uh, and uh, they will be standing on his part. And they shall, they shall pollute the sanctuary of saint. You know, the sanctuary message is crucial. It's, it's a message of truth. It's a message of the plan of salvation. But they don't like that. They don't like it. Why? Because they embrace the pride of Babylon. They embrace the persecution of Middle Persia. They embrace the philosophy of, uh, of Greece. And all occult and all paganism is embraced uh, with them. And that's why they don't like the sanctuary of strength because it uh, reveals their foolishness. And such as do wickedly against, against the covenant shall he corrupt by how? Flattery. flattery. What is flattery? Deception. Flattery is, is a lie, really. It's deception. It's a deceptive power, a forceful power with the army. Uh, he's going with the army and also he's going with lies. So it's, it, it, we don't need to join this kind of thing. This is not heavenly. This is not of the truth. This is not of the Almighty God. Daniel chapter 11, verse uh, 38 and 43, it says, In his estate shall he honor what? The God of forces. Yeah, the army, the God of forces. And he shall have power over the Treasure. treasures. In other words, the finances, gold and silver. Jesus. He's able to control, even today, the whole world's finances. Right. It's amazing. You know, it's amazing what's taking place, but God allows it. And so if you can get, get by without, uh, you know, uh, you can learn how to uh, live with little, because God is, when God is in it, little is much. Amen. And so we need to, you know, just as Israel was brought low, we will be brought low, but praise God that through Him, we will be able to do even with our gold and silver. And uh, no problem. Uh, well, you can see here 42 prophetic months from 538 to 1798, 1260 years of what kind of ages? Dark ages. Dark ages. Why? Because the Bible was uh, uh, trampled under foot, thrown down. This was the papal tyranny and persecution. Well, let's see a little bit about it. In 1798, we see in Daniel 11:40, and at that time of the end, 1798, shall the king of the south, you know, spiritual Egypt, which is France, uh, push at him the king of the north. The papacy is the king of the north, okay? So uh, France uh, dethroned in 1798, even though France set up the papacy and, and they were taking, it, taking him down and captured uh, the Pope and he died in Valence, France. So, um, yes, uh, they came to an end. It was a deadly wound, but, uh, you know, not to a full end. And so Napoleon's general Berthier uh, took the Pope uh, into captivity in 1798 Papacy received a deadly wound through France. Well, Revelation um, 11, verse 3, it says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So we saw that, that the sackcloth period was there. And so how is this two witnesses? Well, in Revelation 11 verse 4 goes on further to explain it. That these are the two olive trees. So you have two olive trees here. Olives uh, produce oil. And uh, the two candlesticks, they are also two candlesticks. It's a symbolism standing before the God of the earth. Amen? Amen. And so let's see. 
in uh, Psalms 119, verse 105, thy word, the very word of God is what? A lamp. Is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. So I can follow on that narrow path. Amen? Amen. Uh, Jesus says in uh, John 5, 39, search the scriptures. In that time, they just had the Old Testament. Search the scriptures, for in them ye shall think that ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. In other words, you can find in the Old Testament on every page Jesus Christ. You can trace him down in the life of Joseph, in the life of Moses, in the life of Daniel, and so on. Amen? Does it make sense? All right, but let's look at this uh, two witnesses. Here you can see my two witnesses, the Bible, the Old and New Testament. Uh, they testify of Jesus, and also they are prophets. Uh, prophecy, 1260 days in sackcloth, uh, Bible suppressed by the papacy. And then uh, two olive trees, they make oil, in, uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to understand the Bible. Amen? Amen? Does that make sense? And then, the two candlesticks, uh, the Bible is the light and the lamp. Amen? And then these two prophets, they predict flags, and also they give us promises. Amen? Hallelujah. So it's not all gloomy. And there is promises for you and I. We saw that the 1260 years was in the Bible, two times in Daniel, five times in Revelation, and, uh, and two times in this very chapter. And so in verse 3 of chapter 11 in Revelation, the Old and New Testament prophesy in sackcloth for 1260 years. And then in Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, he says, I saw under the altar souls of them that were what? Slain. That were slain. You know, there were a lot of people slain, a lot of martyrs slain for what? The word of God. They were slain for the word of God. You know, today I have 20 Bibles. Mm -hmm. They could slay me 20 times over. But today, they don't, they don't kill necessarily in this country for having the Bible. But back then, if you had a Bible, you were killed. You were killed. And so just for just having the Bible and for the testimony, if you shared, which they have. So morning in sackcloth, Bible believers were slain. Well, listen to this uh, uh, second council in... Uh, uh, Tarragon uh, uh, 1234 very easy to remember 1234 AD says a papal suppression and burning of the Bible listen to their language no one may possess the book of the old, old and the new yes. testament the two you cannot have it you cannot have it um, and if any possess them, he must turn them over to the bishop within eight days so that they may be burned. They burnt a lot of Bibles. You know, in those days, they were Henrican Bibles. And they burned it. It took a lot of time. I remember at Emmett University, we wrote out the whole Bible, you know, on big sheets. And it took... I, I made a sheet myself, and you know, it took quite a bit of time to write out. But they could have spread the Bible, even with handwriting. handwriting. Um, but no, they were burning that. Well, that's why you can see here that the uh, papacy uh, deleted and edited God's law. How so? Because the Bibles were taken away, and they were, they were able to play with things. And so they took out the second commandment. That's why I had to memorize this as a, a Catholic young man. And they nullified the fourth commandment to one sentence. And they split the tent into two. And that's why we have, thus they have deceived, how many? Billions. 
billions of people are being deceived. They, you know, this white man, uh, uh, the Pope Francis, you know, he looked like an innocent man. But look what they stand for. Fooling billions, fooling billions, and that's the problem. Um, Wycliffe, you know, the, the Morning Star, made the first English translation of the Bible in 13. 1382. And the Roman Church burned his handwritten Bibles and his followers at the stake. That's what they did way back then. Well, on, uh, on uh, July 6, uh, 1415, the papacy burned, you know, the Czechoslovakian John Huss, uh, Bohemian, at the stake using Wycliffe's handwritten Bibles as kindling for the flames. You know, just making mockery, mockery of, uh, of the Bible. William Tyndale translated the Bible into English. And so on October 6, 1536, Tyndale was strangled. strangled and burned at the stake. His last words, Lord, open the kings of England's eye. You know, we need to pray today pray that God us. would open our enemies' eyes, mm -hmm. that they could see. There are many people out there, precious people, you know, if they could just see. They are blind. They cannot see. Have mercy, Lord. That's why we need to spend much time in prayer. You know, instead of wasting our time, don't waste your time, young people with video games and so on, older people with novels and whatever. Be in the Word of God and be in prayer. It's, it's high time for us to do that. Um, well, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 5, we go further. It says, and if any man will hurt them, what will happen? Fire. Fire proceeded out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this same manner be killed. Be killed. So if you won't play with, you know, this is actually a prediction of the final destruction also. And so uh, it's uh, the final judgment is, is predicted here in a way. But let's see if we can find an example in the Bible. Uh, you know, sometimes God gave some very uh, strong rebuke to situations. We can find it in the New Testament and we can find it in the Old Testament. And look at this one with me in uh, 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Here, King Ahaziah was sick. He fell down and he hurt himself to the point of death. And so he's on his deathbed. And he sends messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of who? Beelzebub. Beelzebub. In other words, go to Satan and, uh, and ask the witchcraft or, or whoever, you know, today, his language, and, uh, and bring some news for me. Will I recover? Will I be healed? Uh, he was seeing, uh, seeking that kind of uh, healing. And so uh, Elijah was told by God to go and, uh, and stop these messengers and tell them that he will not come down from his bed, uh, but he will die. And so the messengers turn around. They never went to uh, this uh, Beelzebub. And so here it says, in, uh, uh, say unto them, it is not because there is not a God in Israel, that ye go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Akron. Mm. And so when, when they turned back, the king was disappointed. What happened? Well, they said, uh, a hairy man stopped us and, uh, and uh, he gave us the instruction. And he said, go and get that hairy man. Mm. That, that is Elijah. Mm. And so he, he, he sends a captain. You know, captains were usually proud. And so he sends a captain with 50 others. And look at what will happen. It says, a king sent unto him, in uh, uh, verse 9 and 10, a captain of 50. And Elijah answered, because uh, this captain was ordering Elijah to come down from the mountain. Come down. Um, and he said, if I be the man of God, 
then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came what? There came fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. You know, you cannot go against the word of God. You cannot go against God. You know, because it's destruction. Our very breath is depending on the Almighty God. And so here, uh, they were all destroyed. Well, the king learned about it. And he sends an other 50. He's not, you know, he's persistent. He wants to know what is his future. And he wants to have this Elijah. He would have liked to tear Elijah apart. And... Uh, Let's see what happens. He sends the second, same thing happened. But finally he sends the third one in verse 13. And this captain is a humble captain. He must be, you could say today, a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. And so the third captain of the 50 went up and came and did what? Fell on his knees. Fell on his knees. Humble, meek fell on his knees before Elijah, Elijah representing here the Almighty God, and besought him, or just by praying to him, uh, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty, thy servants, thy servants. In other words, you are above us, we are underneath you, we are your servant, be precious in thy sight. And so what happens? God tells Elijah, you can go with this man. Mm -hmm. And so he goes. Yes, in uh, Matthew 5, 5, Jesus on the Sermon on the Mountain, the meek shall inherit the earth. We need to learn meekness when we come to the Word of God, when we're dealing with the Almighty God. And so in verse 6 of Revelation 11, uh, these two witnesses uh, have power to shut up heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. The Word of God is able to uh, deal with, with uh, a drought if it's needed and, um, and have power over waters to turn them to blood. Uh, we saw that in Egypt. And to smite the earth with what? All plagues. With all kind of plagues as often as they will. We saw the ten plagues in Egypt, but even today, you know, we have a plague like uh, um, 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 AIDS, you know, AIDS could be avoided if we are following the word of God, but the plague is there, and we will have the seven less plagues coming as well. God will uh, deal with sin. Um, <clears throat> in verse 7 of Revelation uh, 11, it says, and when they the two witnesses, the Old and New Testament, shall have finished their testimony. In other words, then they come to the end of the 1260 years. Um, the beast, here comes that other beast. You know, there are basically three beasts in Revelation. You have the first beast uh, in um, chapter 13, representing the papacy. You have the second beast representing America, the United States, and now we have this beast, and we need to understand this beast also. It's a kingdom, it's a power, uh, the beast that ascended out of her, out of the bottomless pit from Satan himself. You know, the others were not described this way, uh, however, Satan took them over, and uh, Satan set up the papacy, but this one, it says it's coming from the bottomless pit. We don't uh, have time for going to Revelation 20. You know, Satan will be put into the bottomless pit. And so he comes up from the bottomless pit and make what? War. And make war against the two witnesses, against the Bible, and shall kill, kill the word of God. Kill the word of God. How could that be? And what nation killed the Bible in the late 1700s? What nation dared to do that? Well, uh, France uh, warred against and killed the Bible by uh, nationally outlawing it and burning it 
uh, for three and a half years. No other nation rose up against the word of God like France. No other nation in the whole world, in the whole world. You know, there was a lot of persecution in China, but we have the largest uh, Seventh-day Adventist church in China, 6,000 members, you know. So, so, you know, even communism in, in some areas were, were tolerating, but here, these French people at this time, they were for three and a half years burning it and outlawing it as a nation, that you cannot have it, you cannot have it. From uh, 1793 to 1797, at the end of the 1260 years, uh, spiritually is called Sodom, you know, sexual perversion in France. Spiritually like Egypt, uh, atheistic philosophy, crucified Christ in the person of his saints, made laws against the Bible for three and a half years, and then, you know, Revoke that same assembly had to gather together again three and a half years later, and they saw you cannot live without the Bible. Amen. We need the Bible, Amen. and so they reassembled again and they revoked that. Uh, so those laws um, and uh, restored the Bible again. Uh, one of the ten horns of Rome, the ten part Revelation eleven thirteen. Well, listen to the great controversy. You know, this book really helped us a lot to understand these situations. There's a lot of good quotations here. Great Controversy 265, it says, The war against the Bible carried forward for so many centuries in France. They were against it, but not so much as in the final end culminated in the scenes of the revolution. You know, there was a bloody revolution there. Um, that terrible outbreak was but a legitimate result of Rome's uh, superstition or su uh, suppression of scripture. They suppressed the scripture. Um, it uh, presented the most striking illustration which the world has ever witnessed of the working out of people, what? Papal policy. policy. You don't want to go with papal policy. Amen. Your policy needs to be with the word of God. Amen? Amen. In Revelation 11 verse 8, and their dead bodies, the Old and New Testament, shall lie in the street, a, uh, in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Well, you know, Jesus was crucified in uh, his saints. Uh, so brutally persecuted God's people um, like no other nation in the world. Um, uh, persecution of Bible believers by friends. We can see here that 1209 to 1229 uh, crusades to exterminate the Albigenses over one million killed. Another, in 1562, thousands of Huguenots uh, hunted down and killed. In 1572, St. Bertrand massacred, they still celebrate that, uh, ordered by the king, and 70,000 killed in two months. And in 1686, 12,000 killed in concentration camps. And so, well, what is this sodomite uh, uh, sexual perversion? Uh, Genesis chapter 19, verse 5, it says, Where are the men? You know, there were two handsome men. Uh, angels can take on different forms, and they chose to, to come in a very handsome way. And so uh, that aroused the whole town. You know, the whole town came out, and uh, last day, and so they are bringing them out. Uh, they requesting that looks like uh, hmm. Go ahead. you might be in trouble with my mic. Uh, sorry. Looks like I may just have to use the other mic. Okay, let's see if this will work. 
Sexual perversion uh, is taking place today, and uh, done now. All right. Yeah, uh, sexual perversion is taking place today, not just uh, you know what happened in France, but uh, all over. And before Israel went into the Promised Land, they had that problem too. So we need to be very careful that all of us need to have proper uh, sexual behavior today because the devil is uh, tempting left and right um, us with his way. So here you can see that uh, they were going for these two handsome men, bring them out onto us that we may we may know them, that's meaning yes, we may abuse them sexually. And so it's a sad picture, but that's where France came to. Homosexuality was very rampant there. And uh, you know, when you throw out the Bible, when you throw out the Ten Commandments, uh, you are loose into the hands of Satan, really. The, the true freedom is within the Ten Commandments. Yeah. The Ten Commandments is like a fence unto you and me. So, what about uh, the, the Egypt? Uh, you know, spiritual Egypt. Uh, Egypt, uh, 80s. Uh, here, Pharaoh, you know, he should have known. You know, Joseph was there, and uh, Joseph educated the people, but this, this Pharaoh didn't pay attention uh, to the spread of the Word of God in Egypt at that time. And so he says, who is the Lord? Who is this Yahweh created God that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord or this Yahweh, neither will I let Israel go. He's defiant. He is, he is proud. He is not humbling himself before the Almighty Creator God. And that's what we saw in France. Uh, that's, and that is uh, predicted there. And then... Uh, Listen to this uh, magazine here, Blackwoods Magazine, November 1870. It says, France is the only nation in, where? in the world, in the whole world uh, which by the decree of the Legislative Assembly, October 16, 19, uh, I mean 1793, pronounced that there was who? No God. There is no God. I don't know God. There is no God. Just like Pharaoh, um, of which the entire population danced and sang with joy. You know, they can enter into this foolishness, uh, rejoicing over nonsense, but, uh, you know, there is a living God today, and there was a living God back then as well. So, let's see. <clears throat> France denied uh, the existence of God, degraded uh, what? Mary. Degraded marriage, marriages were falling apart just like today, uh, prohibited any worship of God, Bibles were collected and publicly burned and with scorn, uh, Bible societies were forced to close, people were forced to swear allegiance to atheism or be executed, uh, the Bible was outlawed, Baptism and communion were prohibited. Uh, and listen to this one. That was uh, declared to be an eternal sleep. Why? Because they have no hope. No. With communism, you have no hope. That's right. Only the word of God gives you hope for the future. And uh, their battle cry was, crush the wretch, uh, meaning crush Jesus Christ. This is where they went. You know, with the, with the frenzy. And uh, France warred, warred against and killed the Bible. All Bibles were destroyed, and they tried the calendar with 10-day week. But, you know, you cannot go with 10-day week. God created us for 7-day week. 
And so when they tried a 10 day, people get sick and people did less production, they cannot do it. And so executed for anything religious, um, the goddess of reason, you know, man's reason, uh, worshiped, church uh, property sold and uh, desecrated, a reign of terror, no safety anywhere, a baby starts from spare to spare, and uh, uh, guillotines, of, uh, guillotines in continuous use, uh, the worship of deity was abolished by law. That was friends. And so in Revelation 11 verse 10 it says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, over the Old and New Testament, and make merry, you know, they rejoicing on the wrong thing, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets, or the Bible, the Old and New Testament, did what? Yes, there is a guilt uh, when we are sinning. There is a guilt with that, and they were tormented uh, because they didn't bring their life in harmony with the Bible. Uh, so they were tormented them that dwell upon the earth. Then in verse uh, 11, uh, chapter 11, it says, And after three days and a half, you know, these are uh, uh, day for year principle, uh, three and a half years, the spirit of what? Life. The spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear, great fear fell upon them with Sodom. So in June 17, uh, 1797, anti-religious laws revoked. They changed. That same assembly settled back together and they said we need to bring uh, allowance for the Bible. And so they were from then on, they were free to worship. Uh, repealed anti-Bible and anti-worship laws, and uh, Protestants also given religious freedom. Amen. You know, Protestantism had a hard time to break into France because it was the son of Catholicism. And so Catholicism was very strong over there, but Catholicism pulled France down, so they, they turned viciously against uh, not just popery, but against all religion. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 12, it says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, you know. And uh, they ascended, just like Jesus, you know. Uh, many people would have re-crucified Jesus Christ if he stayed on earth. Mm -hmm. But here you can see the same thing. Uh, it, uh, the Bible ascended off to heaven in a symbolic way, in a cloud. Just like Jesus was received in the cloud, cloud of angels, and their enemies beheld them. What happened? You know, well, the British Foreign Bible Society started in 1804, printing uh, millions of uh, Bibles. And uh, in 1816, American Bible Society started. And even in France, you know, in 1818, Bible Society started in uh, Paris, over a billion copies in over 1,000 languages. So praise God, you know, that something uh, great came out of it. There was a, a, a great awakening because they didn't want communism to go all around the globe. Amen. Communists wanted to take over the world, but they, they could not. God allowed them to only go so far. And unfortunately, I had a taste of it. Revelation 11, verse 13, here it says, And the same hour was uh, the great earthquake, uh, and one-tenth of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant, you know, the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God. Gave glory to God. That's why, you know, people examined their hearts, and they said it's time for us to sacrifice our lives to go into the mission field and share the gospel. That's why, you know, today uh, the best thing you can do is to share the word of God, to prepare. And so the wicked fell, 
and uh, are slain uh, and one tenth of uh, one of the ten horns affected and the remnant fear God and give glory to him. Amen. And so we need to give glory to God today. We need to share these messages. Amen. You know, let it be going around the globe. Do your part. You can uh, be part of sharing the good news of God. Well, great controversy, um, page 230. It says, uh, the Reformation had uh, presented to a world an open Bible. An open Bible unsealed the precepts of God's law and urging its claim upon the consciences of the people. When France did what? Reject. France rejected the gift of heaven. She sowed the seed of anarchy and ruin. And the inevitable outworking of cause and effect resulted in the revolu revolution and the reign of terror. Yes, it was a terror. That's why you, you can see here this picture what they have done. In Revelation 11 verse 14 it says, The reign of terror, the second woe is past, and behold, a third woe um, quickly. That's so, the, so we had the first woe, we had the second woe in, with the French uh, Revolution, and then we have still a worse coming yet. And so let's look at that, uh, how will that come out. Uh, Great Controversy 595, it says, but God will have a people. Amen? Let us be that. Will you be uh, his people? By, his By grace. God's grace. God will have a people upon the earth to do what? Maintain the Bible. To maintain the Bible and the Bible only. only as the standard of all doctrines. You know, all teaching needs to come from the Word of Amen. God and the basis of all reform before accepting any doctrine or precept. We should demand a what? Plain. A plain, oh. thus saith the Lord. How? In its support. So we need the support from you know, two or three witnesses from the Bible before we fall for something. In Matthew 4, 4, Jesus says, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, you know, by every word uh, that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. It's a very important part because, you know, for um, 28 years I was just feeding my tummy, but I was not feeding my brain. And so, hallelujah, now I can feed my brain on a regular basis. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, quotations from Great Controversy, page 598. It says, it is the first and highest. Which one? First and it highest. is the first and highest duty of every, what kind of being? Rational. Rational being. To learn from where? The learn from the scriptures what is truth. We need, you know, the truth was cast down by the papacy. Right. We need to pick it up and we need to learn it. What is truth? And then to do what? To walk in the light and encourage others to follow his example. Amen. We should how often? Day by day. day by day study the Bible diligently, weighing every thought and comparing scripture with what? With scripture. With scripture. Comparing scripture with scripture and with divine help, the help of the Holy Spirit, we are to form our opinion, opinion for ourselves as we are to answer for ourselves before God. Right. Amen? Amen? It's a very powerful quotation. You want to memorize it. In Job chapter 23 verse 12, it says, Neither have I gone back from the what? from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed thy word more than my necessary food. Nope. It's very important for us to understand the importance of the word of God. Well, today, as you see, we are preparing for the third bow. Ecumenical unity is uh, moving people together. Uh, Rome's daughters are coming yeah. back. Apostate uh, Protestantism returned to Rome. We can see the Evangelicals, we can see the Lutheran, Anglicans, Presbyterians, Reformed churches, Orthodox churches, 
Valdenses, uh, United Church of Christ, and many more. They are all coming back uh, because they think uh, this uh, system has changed and we can uh, join now. They actually say you leave your doctrines at the door and we just unite in the, in the spirit. That's, uh, you know, yeah. And uh, global unity also is taking place uh, uh, Rome's uh, friends. And we can see here that all roads are leading to Rome. Uh, world's, world's leaders are coming there, especially next year. You know, they are summoned there. And non-Christian uh, uh, religions uh, are also coming there. You can see it here. And uh, social media CEOs are coming there. Rock stars and actors are coming there. Uh, major uh, mayors and uh, civic leaders are coming there. All, ki all kind of unity is taking place. You know, the deadly wound is healed, and therefore we're going to see worse than what we had during the Dark Ages. And one of my members was asking, Pastor, why do we have to go through the Dark Ages again? Well, we didn't learn from it, and so we will go through it again. But we don't have to go through it alone. Jesus will be there with us all through it. And so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Uh, 2015 Global Unity, there you can see uh, a major landmark in human history. Uh, United Nations were uh, addressed or opened by Francis. Uh, Pope Francis opened the meeting and promoted what? Promoted Laratasi, his uh, climate change encyclical pushing for Sunday worship. Sunday worship. You know, that it's very clever. It's very clever, but the world is buying into it. And so, you know, that has been almost five years now. And so he's pushing for this and it's going to take place and our freedom is very soon taken away. Well, what is in that Lala to say? Um, it says the gospel of creation, ecological education and spirituality. And it says Sunday. Sunday. Well... You know, sun, day. He is worshiping the sun disk here. And you can see that he's taking off his hat. You can see that he's not holding it with his bare hand. Why? Because he's worshiping the sun. And so he's saying Sunday is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Is that true? No, no it's a lie. It's a lie. And so why, why not he go back to the word of God? You know, why not he go back to the Ten Commandments? Very plain in there what we ought to do. On uh, the Great Controversy, page 595, it says Satan is constantly, how? Constantly, constantly endeavoring to attract attention to who? Man. To man in place of God. He leads people to look to bishops, pastors, professors of theology as their guides instead of searching the scriptures to learn their what? Duty. To learn their duty for themselves then by controlling the minds of these Leader. leaders he can influence the multitude or he can influence billions according to his will. That's right. Does that make sense? So we need, you know, it's a trembling time today. We need to be about our Father's business. We need to understand. And we need to open as many minds as possible before it's too late. Well, uh, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Revelation 8 uh, verse 13 tells us. Well, what happened? In the first woe, we see the papacy uh, tyrannical rule for 1260 years. But we also see Islamic rise during that time for 150 years of torment. That was in the first woe. Now the second woe we just covered, there was a persecution of the papacy and uh, there, there was also war of Islam there still and also the reign of terror by friends uh, rise at the uh, atheism. What about the third woe? 
Well, the third woe is the greatest global time of trouble. And the papacy will be involved for sure. Spiritualism will be involved. And apostate Protestantism. And any, um, anyone that not humble it before the word of God. Anyone who is not humbling themselves before the word of God and, you know, falls in that category, Islam, uh, communism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and the list can go on. Does it make sense? Yes. Yes. That's where we are heading. That's where we are heading to the third world. We are right now in part of the third world. And so may God help us to be strong and firm and mighty. Um, that's why in Revelation 10 verse 11 it says, Jesus is speaking here, and he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again. It's a must, you know. There's no, no way around it. So seek for souls for whom uh, uh, Jesus died and so who may be saved. So thou must prophesy again before, before peoples or the whole globe and nations and tongues and, and kings. Amen? Amen? Wherever God takes us, we need to share the light, share the truth. Um, you know, in, in uh, chapter 11 of Revelation, verse 19, the evidence is there, and the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple, what? The Ark, the Ark of his in covenant. Heaven. It's there. You cannot remove it. You know, it went up there. It's there. And uh, no papacy can pull it down. No Islam can pull it down. And no one can pull it down. It's there. You know, uh, one time I saw this uh, mega church. You know, there the pastor holding an axe. And there was an ark like this. And he was holding it and, and breaking it. And he says, you know, we don't need the law. We don't need it. We don't need the covenant. The Jews could not keep it. We don't need it. We are free. We are, it's just ridiculous, you know. But no, it will be there through eternity. Amen. That's the transcript of God's character. And uh, it will be there. In Revelation chapter 14, verse uh, 7, the first angel's message says, Fear God, or humble yourself before the Almighty God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him and him alone that made or created heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Amen. Amen. He alone deserves our worship. The Pope doesn't deserve our worship no matter how the world may exalt him. You know, and he's an exalted person. He's the most powerful person on the face of the earth. But but uh, he's still, you know, nothing, he's still dust. Yeah. He's nothing compared to the Almighty God. So, so Jesus is still calling, come out of her, my people. Come out of this foolishness. Come out of this confusion. Come out, run out of her, flee out of her, my people, yeah. that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Jeremiah 51 verse 6. Touch nothing of theirs. Lest ye be consumed in all their sins. Numbers, Numbers 16 26. These are very important warnings. And we, we cannot play with it. You know, unfortunately, there are some among us who will fall for them, even though we are of the remnant church, because they try to infiltrate us. But you and I need to stand on the word of God and the word of God alone. Amen. And so in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. You know, never was. Since there was a nation, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Everyone, everyone, that is found written in the, in the book, of, book of life. How can you be written in the book of life? Jesus is just a prayer away. You can have a simple prayer like Peter. Lord, save me. Or Jesus, save me. Save me. And he did. 
great controversy, uh, 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 page 593 and 94, it says, none but those, none but those who have what? Fortified their mind. Fortified their mind with the truth of the Bible will stand through the last great conflict. The rest, last great conflict is upon us. And we need to fortify our minds with the truth of the scripture, the truth of the Bible. To every soul will come a searching test. And what is that searching test? Shall I obey God rather than man? The pressure will be on. You know, your salary may be cut off. Uh, the death decree will be uh, placed upon you. And, uh, and hardship will be upon you left and right. And but then the question, shall I obey God rather than man? Yes. yes. Are you going to join me to obey yes. God no matter what the cost? Amen. You know, if I have to be sacrificed, I won't be the first one. That's right. And many millions have had to sacrifice oh. for the word of God. And if we're going to be faithful in these final days, we may be. We may not have to, but we may be. And so, shall I obey God rather than man? The decisive hour is even now at hand. Our, our feet planted on the rock of God's immutable, unmovable word. Are we uh, prepared to stand firm in the defense of the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. We need to stand. We need to stand. God will help us. You know, we need not just a little faith in Jesus, but we need the whole faith of Jesus. The faith that says, um, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen? Amen. Jesus in Acts chapter 17, verse 30, 30 through the prophet says, the time of this ignorance, God winked it. You know, I was in ignorance for 28 years, but now, today, he commanded. commanded all men everywhere around the globe Jesus. to repent, to turn back to the Word of God, to turn back to the living Creator God. It's a, it's a, a call for global repentance. It is high time for us to go all the way and not just partway. It's hard time to, for total dedication. So Jesus is not forcing anyone. He's, he's not uh, putting out a sword. He's, he's just calling, inviting, come unto me, come unto me. Are we ready to have a fresh experience with him today? Amen? Amen. Lord, I'm, I'm yours. I want to go with you all the way, all the way. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the word of this prophecy and do what? Keep. And keep. You know, it's one thing to hear it. You will be blessed. But, but that's not the total blessing. It's one thing to read it. You know, you will be blessed. But you need to put it. If you want a total blessing, if you want a blessing that comes, you will need to put the book of Revelation into practice. You will need to put the whole Bible into practice uh, and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand, Revelation 1.3. Well, my wife will come and uh, sing for us uh, a beautiful scripture song uh, called Arise. And you and I need to arise. Uh, we will need to uh, take up the torch and uh, carry the reformation on and win souls for the Almighty. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light
to arise? Are we ready to share this good news? It is a good news. You know, the gross darkness is coming more and more. And we need to be able to shine. Amen. People need to see and feel that there is an atmosphere around us, a heavenly atmosphere, that we are walking with heaven, that we are walking with the King of Kings. And so you and I need to take a different look at this and make sure that we will be able to stand with Jesus in these final days. Let nothing take your attention away, you know, uh, playing around with uh, nonsense. We need to be about our Father's business. Every day, He wants to lead us. You know, I don't have a, a wisdom to plan my tomorrow. Amen. I don't know if tomorrow comes, right. but I want to be faithful today, Amen. today, Amen. in my thoughts, in my words, Amen and in my action. Will you join me on that? Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, thank you for our high calling. Father, who is sufficient, but through you all things are possible. Even the disciples were asking, who shall be saved? And they were saved except the son of perdition. That's right. And we are the same way today. Who can measure up to this high calling? No one. But through you, we are more than conquerors. I pray, Father, that each one of us will be in your kingdom. And not only us here, but many others who will listen to your truth. Help us to arise and shine and make a difference in this world that becomes with gross darkness. Have mercy. Thank you for our mighty Savior, Jesus Amen. Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Guide us. Preserve and protect us through your holy angels. Amen. And Father, if we have to be sacrificed, let it be. Let your will be done always. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Uh, remain standing. Uh, we will sing our closing song. And I believe that is uh, about the promises of God. Let's see the, the numbers. 518. 518. 518. Let's all sing together, please. Yeah, sing it from your heart. Mm -hmm. 